Okay, I hope this one is louder. Um, turn the mic up to 85%. Hope that's good enough. Um, what we're going to do here is show you how to add components to the uh, CTEX, I mean to the uh, LT Spice library and uh, a few other things. So first thing we have to do is find, let's say we want to add the ZTX327 to our library from the uh, from the amplifier model that we did. And uh, first thing we have to do is go out on the web and find it. We open a browser and Google here and type in We'll type, well, I've typed it in before, so I'll just click on it and do a search. Now, fortunately, this I'd looked through a bunch of things and finally found it inside this one. And the browser being smart, now whenever I open it, it puts this one first. So you would have had to dig, do some digging to find it. When I open this one up here, I find a bunch of text, do a control F, and look for ZTX327. And lo and behold, there it is down there. There's a dot model statement uh, with the ZTX327 parameters, which is what we need. Okay, now where do where does this go? Where do we have to put this information? If you right click on your uh, start button and pick File Explorer, of course it opens in another window, um, and you want to go to your Documents folder and find LT Spice and go into your lib directory and your components directory. And in this case, uh, we're, it's a BJT, a bipolar transistor, so it will be in this file, standard.bjt. So we edit this file, of course. There it is. All right. Um, most of the model, I added this one this morning uh, playing around. So you can see that this they all consist of a dot model statement, a transistor, and then NPN or PNP parenthesis and a whole list of parameters and an end parenthesis. Uh, this one wraps around on the right and comes out down here. So. That format is very similar to this, to the one in the ZTEX file, except that it seems to be missing the parentheses. And um, we could remove these continuation pluses and string it out on one line, or we don't have to, as we see in the example of my 4401C here. So let's grab this ZTEX. and do a copy, right click copy, come over here and paste it in. Um, control V to paste it in. And let's get rid of this slash ZTEX in the name. Oops, I grabbed the wrong one. I wanted a 327. Okay, wrong. Take that back out, go back over here and grab the 327. Okay, I go to the CTX in the name. And then we want NPN parenthesis. And a close parenthesis down here. And probably good to put in a MFG manufacturer equals ZTEX. Uh, Spice will list that as the manufacturer. So if you have multiple transistors of the same type, um, you give it a different name. Like here I gave the 4401 a C and the manufacturer was central semiconductor. So now I've added the ZTX327 to my file, and I'm going to call it ZTX327B because it turns out I already have this 327 in my file from previous, and it's probably the same one. 
but for training purposes, um, I'll go ahead and put it in. We'll do file, save, and we're done. Okay. Now let's go uh, open up our project. Actually, we'll go over here, tools, spice, and oops, start spice, and uh, open up the WellGood file that we had opened before, which has ZTX 327s on it. Now we should be able to open this up and pick a new transistor, and we see the 327B sitting right there from ZTEX. Okay, and it's probably exactly the same. We slide over a little bit. IS equal 3.15. Yep, it's the same. So I really didn't need to add that, but I illustrated how to put the thing in there. So now you know how to add a part to the library and, and access it. Now, as long as we're in this uh, model here, let's look at a couple of other things. Let's run the sim. And notice the peak over here wasn't there before. That's because I would, didn't put these 82 puff caps in at the input. And I, since, uh, since my previous video, I've cleaned this picture up a little bit and added those missing caps. And what that basically does is boost up the high frequency a little bit. Um, this is still the power gain. So the gain is not that great out at HF, according to this uh, simulation anyway. Um, what I wanted to show you is some things like looking at the bias values, um, the bias currents, and so on and so forth. We can look at the emitter current by highlighting the emitter connection point, and you see a little current come up. And in the lower left corner down here, you will see the values displayed. So let me get on that. Here. There it is. And it's uh, 62.95 milliamps. And that will be the same as the current in this transformer, 62.95 milliamps. The base, base voltage is sitting at 3.9 times 933 volts. And the um, that should be the base voltage, yes. And then the emitter should be a diode drop below that at 3.14 volts. Okay. So we can also measure the bias current 62.95 by looking in the emitter resistor current. Okay, so um, that's pretty much what I wanted to show you in this one. Probably forgetting something, but there you go. We can also see if the volume is better. Let's close this.